The Canon EOS 7D is a DSLR with the ability to record 1080p video. Since it was introduced in late 2009, it has been used on several major film productions as a B and C camera. We have used it for 4 years in commercial projects as well as for short films and tutorials. The camera is known for the ability to create a film look thanks to the option of recording with 24 frames per second and the shallow depth of field due to the APS-C sensor. The semi-professional DSLR has a Canon EF mount, which means you can put a lot of different lenses on it. Depending on which lens you are using, it's easy to get a filmic look. Usually kit lenses like the 18 to 55 or 18 to 135 mm lenses are not as sharp as Canon L glass, which doesn't come in cheap, but definitely makes a difference in terms of detail, sharpness, contrast and depth of field. Since the camera doesn't have a built-in image stabilizer, you have to be aware that footage can be shaky when filming handheld. Many lenses do have image stabilization, but not all of them, so be aware of that while choosing a lens. The build quality and the ergonomics are great and the body can handle a lot. We have used it in storms, snow, rain and all kind of situations where a manufacturer wouldn't recommend you to take it. The buttons are good positioned as well, which means that it's easy to access and change your settings while recording video. The overall look of the image isn't really sharp and detailed. A big problem is moiré and aliasing, which are nasty colored lines that can occur when filming detailed objects such as hair or fine lines. Aliasing is especially visible in wide angle shots. To avoid a huge amount of that, we recommend to film with a flat picture profile in which the digital sharpness is turned down completely. Recording audio is an important part of filmmaking and you can plug in an external mic with a 3.5mm jack. The downside is that you cannot change the audio levels manually while recording. You can access the menu before hitting the start button and adjust the levels. There is also no headphone jack, so you never can be sure how the audio will turn out. Depending on which microphone you are using and how the audio levels are set, you might also hear some audio noise or hiss. Und das ist jedes Mal eine Selbstverständlichkeit, dass man hierher kommt, wenn man hier schon wohnt. Das gehört dazu. Wir sind friedlich, was seid ihr? Wir sind friedlich, was seid ihr? Wolltest du kurz fragen, geht's dir gut? Und wieder einmal höre ich dir nicht zu. Weiß auch nicht, woran es liegt. Weiß nur eins, dass der Moment verfliegt. I have been using this mic for like two months now, mostly for news and documentary work. And I have to say it's really great if you want to capture some ambient sound, some surround sound. The Canon 7D has a recording limit of 12 minutes. That means the recording will stop after that time. You have to press record again and it will start a new clip. But in a lot of cases the camera stops recording again to prevent it from overheating, so it makes sense to turn the camera off between longer takes. In case you want to use continuous autofocus, you should know that there is no such option available. You can autofocus one time before hitting the record button, but as soon as you did that, you should use the manual focus. Features like focus peaking to see what is in focus and what not, or zebra to see if the image is exposed correctly are missing. You can use the focus loop before recording to check focus, but not while recording. The 7D records 1080p and 720p in MOV files with an H.264 codec. If you want to do some heavy color correction, we recommend converting the files to ProRes first to avoid blocking and artifacts while grading the footage. Filming in 720p isn't such a good idea because the bitrate is not so high and the difference to full HD is clearly visible. Moiré and the lack of detail are extreme. 
Since the camera can shoot with 50 or 60 frames per second, you can slow down the footage to get some nice slow motion shots. To avoid image noise, you should only film at certain ISO values such as 160 or 640. If you want to shoot under low light conditions, you shouldn't go higher than ISO 1600, otherwise colored image noise becomes visible and the image falls apart. To use the Canon 7D as a film camera, you have to set it up differently than when using it for still photography. First, you need to go into video mode by switching the button next to the viewfinder. The mode dial on top should be in manual mode. The camera menu has a lot of options, but only a few are important for capturing video. Auto lightning optimization should be turned off to avoid light and contrast changes when filming with the same settings. How your image will look like is hugely defined by how you set up the picture profile. If you want to color correct your footage in post, it makes sense to shoot with a flat picture profile to maintain a high dynamic range. Sharpness and contrast should be all the way down and the saturation at minus 2. Color tone can stay at 0. If you don't want to color correct or grade your files, you can play around with the saturation and maybe the contrast, but the sharpness should always be at zero to avoid moiré and aliasing and an overall digital look. Depending on where you are located and for whom and what you are shooting, you can select a frame rate. In Europe, PAL is the standard with 25 frames per second. In the US it's 30 frames per second. If you are shooting a commercial or anything that should have a more filmic look, 24 frames per second is the ideal choice. The 7D only offers high frame rates like 50 FPS or 60 FPS in a 720p resolution. The difference between filming in 1080p and 720p is clearly visible, especially in wide shots. Due to a firmware update, it is possible to adjust the audio levels manually. Depending on how loud the audio sources you want to capture, the levels have to be adjusted. By pressing the start stop button, you will access the live view. By pressing it again, the camera will start to record video or stop. The white balance can be changed by pressing the WB button on top of the body. We recommend using the Kelvin values to be able to adjust everything depending on how your light is. There are also presets available, but especially under low light conditions, those presets usually don't work and the colors look weird. The ISO button can change the brightness. The big wheel on the back of the body lets you change the aperture of your lens so you can decide how much light is coming into the camera. The aperture can change the depth of field. f2.8 creates a shallow depth of field, while at f16 almost everything is in focus. The shutter speed can be adjusted by turning the little wheel on top of the body. The shutter speed should always be 150 of a second when shooting with 24 or 25 frames per second to avoid a non-fluent image. When filming under artificial light sources, the light might start to flicker at faster or longer shutter speeds. If you are filming with 50 frames per second, the shutter speed should be 1 100 of a second. There is an easy rule, always double the frame rate and the result is the shutter speed. So, if you are filming with 30 frames per second, the shutter speed should be 1 60 of a second. To be able to film at slower shutter speeds, even in bright daylight, it is necessary to use a neutral density filter, which will make the image darker. If you want to play back your video files, just press the button with the blue play symbol. You have the option of playing back the files in real time or slow motion. Since the camera is designed for stills and not for video, 
The fast forwarding option isn't that fast, but you can also take a look at single frames.